Hi, today we're going to talk about SQL Server Managed Instance. As you may recall, a SQL Server Managed Instance is like having SQL in the cloud where you don't have to manage the infrastructure. You can have many different databases. You can have cross database queries. Uh, Microsoft takes care of the high availability of that so you don't have to worry about clustering. Uh, all the backups are taken care of for you. You can do point in time recovery. What this tutorial is going to do is going to walk you through the steps of setting up a DR or disaster recovery uh, managed instance so that you're covered in the event of a regional disaster. So let's take a look. So let's just clarify a couple things here. Azure SQL database is a general term for basically three different things in Azure Cloud. You've got your single databases. These can go up to terabytes. Uh, they can go up to 100 terabytes actually with the hyperscale. Um, but that's just a single database. You can have many, many of those, but that would be one database at a time, a platform as a service offering. You can also do elastic pools where it's going to group multiple databases together and allow you to kind of grow and shrink your, your, your processing uh, uh, requirements based on that pool. This video is, uh, the scope of that, of this video is managed instance. And to kind of clarify a managed instance, let's go to the next slide here. And this is really what you have come to expect out of an on-premises SQL Server, but in the cloud. The only thing that's really obviously missing is SQL Server Analysis Services, but you can still do that in Azure uh, with your tabular cubes using Azure Analysis Services. And then there's not SQL Server Reporting Services, but you can use Power BI, you can even host your existing uh, SSRS reports as part of Power BI. So I just wanted to clarify that we're talking about SQL Server uh, managed instance in the cloud. Okay, just in case you haven't set up your primary SQL Server managed instance, I wanted to point something out. When you initially create one, it's going to create in Azure, it's going to create a virtual cluster behind the scenes. So just heads up, that could take a few hours, as you can see down here. 90% uh, of the time that operation uh, finishes in less than four hours. Uh, could go to six hours, but that's just the very first time you set up a managed instance. Okay, you can see the different steps that we're going to go through here in the documentation over on the right, but let's jump right into it. So if you don't already have your primary, let's just assume the primary managed instance is going to be on the west coast of the U.S. So the first thing you do is create a resource group. Uh, that can be, you can use an existing resource group. Once again, a resource group is just a logical way to manage uh, your infrastructure and services in Azure. So let's scroll down to the screen here because that's probably the most useful bit of information here. You'll fill in everything that you need to do here, pick your region, and then of course here, configure managed instance, you're gonna pick how large, how many V cores it's going to have, how much storage, etc. So that is creating your primary, in this scenario, West Coast SQL Server Managed Instance. Now here's a key second step before you create your DR instance. You're going to create a virtual network, a VNet. As step one, if you didn't already have VNet, once again it was already created for you as one of the steps. But step two, we're going to create the VNet first. Why is that? We want to make sure the subnet address range here is, does not conflict. We don't want those IP addresses conflicting with our primary. Primary, let's say, is 10.000 uh, for class A IP range here. Um, you might want to make your DR1 10.1.0.0. So you will create that VNet first. Um, you can see the different uh, screens here that come up. But once you've done that, now uh, the coast is clear to create your secondary managed instance. So this one is going to be very similar to the first experience, but make sure the VNet that you pick is the one that you just set up with a subnet of the IP range that did not conflict with your primary managed instance. So that's the key first step. Second step is you're going to pick the option to use this managed instance as a failover secondary. Click yes there, and then the Azure portal will prompt you, well, well, where's your primary? And then you'll pick your primary here. Okay, so that's uh, at this point, you have the two managed instances set up once that's created. 
Okay, moving on to step four, creating the primary virtual network gateway. In order to get our two VNets talking to each other, we're going to set up a, a VNet gateway. You can also use ExpressRoute for that, but if you don't have that, you'll set it up this way. So what we're going to do is go to your subnet of your VNet on the primary. So you're in your primary uh, SQL Server Managed Instance VNet. Go down to subnets. Sub, yeah, subnets, and then click the gateway subnet. And you're just going to leave the defaults for that, create that. Then one more thing you need to do in your primary uh, uh, region is create uh, a network gateway. So you're going to create a gateway so that those VNets can talk to each other. So just simply click create a resource, type in virtual network gateway, and then pick that gateway. So here in the creation screen here, uh, you're going to want to pick VPN for the gateway type uh, down here on the virtual network that you've already set up for your primary managed instance. Okay, step five, we're going to repeat the same process as in step four, but we're going to do it for a DR region. So remember the first thing we did was go to the VNet of the primary, subnets, then pick uh, create a gateway subnet. That was the first thing we did. Then we created, um, the next step was to create the actual uh, network gateway. So same thing, now we're doing that same thing in DR. Go to your VNet for DR, go to subnets, add a gateway subnet, and then you're gonna configure uh, the network gateway like as is shown in this diagram here. Of course, you're gonna pick your VNet for your secondary. Last step um, for connecting these is you create a connection. Now in the documentation, at least as the make at, at the point in time when this video was made, uh, the documentation shows you creating a connection twice, one for uh, primary to DR and another connection for DR to primary. But if you notice over here, if we go to Azure and we say, hey, let's create a new connection actually that experience has been rolled into one here so let's just uh, pick anything right here run a resource group and then say okay now this next screen you can see there's this option to establish bi-directional connectivity if we click on that it just explains that typically a connection only goes one way but this will create both directions for you so give it a first connection name that's the connection that goes from dr to to, sorry, to primary to DR, and then the opposite is here. This is a connection that's established for DR over to primary. You can put anything in the shared key here, um, and then you're ready to go. Okay, the final step is to create a failover group, and let's just talk about what we're about to do. When we create this failover group, you're telling uh, Azure that you want all the databases that are part of the SQL Server Managed Instance in the primary to be replicated over to the secondary. And then that will just keep all those databases in sync and you can fail over to the secondary if you need to and then of course fail back. So in order to set this failover group up, just go to your managed instance, click on the instance failover groups option here and the Azure Blade or menu right here, click add group. And then here you're going to give it a name and then you're going to pick your secondary, which of course in this situation is the one on the East Coast. Um, and then you can also specify a read write grace period. It'll, it'll wait a certain amount of time, I think between one hour or 24 hours before it uh, actually fails over if you want it configured like that um, so that you don't lose any writes. Um, so and then at that point you can test the failover, which is really simple to do by doing a manual fa failover. So that's a, a quick and dirty a run through on how you set up a secondary SQL Server managed instance uh, to be your disaster recovery um, uh, instance. Thanks for watching.